Hello and welcome to our next webinar with the topic new IP devices, new KNX IP devices, IP router, IPRS 311 and uh, IP interface IPS S3.1.1. Yeah, my name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel. I'm sitting here together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, and we will conduct this webinar together as always. So I will start right now and later on Jürgen will follow. We will first of all go in some yeah, in some principles of these uh, components, the overview, what you can do with these components. Uh, of course, followed then by the devices itself with some features and also the ETS application we will show a bit. And furthermore, uh, as all our new components, KNX devices, we have also an integration in the, into our IBOS tool available. Uh, here we will show you also something. And finally, followed by some, some applications and some solutions around these devices. Um, yeah, when Jürgen and myself prepared this webinar, we found out that we need a bit more time for the whole content. So we decided to split this webinar into two parts. So today, what I've just mentioned, and next month, on the 25th of November, we will have a second part of our new IP devices. So we will go in some more details of the IBAS tool. We talk about the filter table uh, topic, uh, the unitask groups we can uh, implement with our new IP router we will show and some more things around this like recording telegrams on IP also sometimes necessary and interesting and uh, things like remote access uh, also via a virtual private network VPN so some more things some more details about the solutions or components um, so this will be then shown on the next webinar on the 25th of November okay let's start what is the task of an IP interface? So we have the IP router and the IP interface. Uh, first of all, it's a connection between the twisted pair, KNX bus cable, and the local area network, the Ethernet, in your project, in your building. And task is to convert KNX telegrams in IP telegrams and vice versa. So communication is possible in both directions. So we have a standard protocol in the twisted pair bus cable, but also the KNX net IP protocol on uh, the Ethernet part. I just go to a better pointer so you can see directly where I'm right now on my on the pictures. So KNX telegrams can be sent to, um, to or received from other devices via the IP network. So we have only another communication media here. But that's only in principle the connection. There is something more behind. Let's talk first of all about the IP interface in general. What is the task of an IP interface? To connect a PC to KNX via IP, for which applications? Typically for visualization, to visualize, any, visualize anything via a PC or also via a tablet or smart uh, phone, it's possible. Here very often any app will be used. Um, of course, then you need also Wi-Fi connection to your Ethernet, which is nowadays not a problem anymore. So that's also very often application. And last but not least, also programming is possible. So programming via your PC with the ETS, via this IP interface, like USB interface, similar is possible. And if you talk about KNXNet IP protocol, which is a standard protocol on the Ethernet side, there are two capabilities. One is a tunneling mode, which is possible with this IP interface. Yeah, and the tunneling mode is a bit better shown here. What does it mean practically? You have here a constellation which consists of a KNX project with some components. The green line is a KNX twisted pair cable connected to our IP interface. This, of course, is then connected to the Ethernet, to the local area network in the building. And further applications, products or yeah, applications are running on the Ethernet, like a PC with ETS programming, for example, or any visualization on a touch panel. And now you would like to connect, for example, your visualization to any components in your KNX installation to operate something or to get any status feedback. In this case, the IP inter work, interface works in a tunneling mode, connects directly the communication from the visualization via its own component to the KNX installation down. So the communication is not evaluated, not routed, not blocked, not filtered. So direct communication without any evaluation exists here. And this is in principle the tunneling connection, the tunneling mode. Yeah, an IP router in principle. 
you see already the new devices I will give you some more information of the products of course but first of all in general what does it mean if I have an IP router in an installation a KNX installation the main task of the IP router is to connect KNX lines or areas KNX areas over IP and routing of te KNX telegrams means in our KNX wording uh, filtering of telegrams means only telegrams which are necessary to pass the IP router will be uh, enabled others will be blocked so in other words we replace uh, line and area couplers by IP routers with the whole functionality of the classical IP uh, sorry KM line couplers as line or area coupler for example main task of this product but in, in addition it's also possible to use it like the IP interface to connect any PC for visualization tasks for connecting any app or pro for programming so the same principle like the IP interface means also this tunneling mode is available here but in addition and the main application the routing mode replacing line and area couplers so double function let's say is available here yeah, and if you look to a classical KNX structure, topology, uh, without IP router at the moment, you remember we have lines available, line couplers, with a power supply and up to 64 devices behind. Uh, the line coupler can be linked to the main line. Everything is twisted pair and over there I can go via area couplers to the backbone line. All uh, classical KNX uh, communication on twisted pair and 15 areas can be connected and each area 15 lines so this is a classical structure if you have no Ethernet connection only twisted pair yeah, 15 areas each area 15 lines as mentioned up to 225 lines are possible so what can we do right now if we go to the main task of the IP router we would like to replace area couplers first of all you see it here the IP router is now in principle an area coupler with the difference that the backbone is not KNX twisted pair anymore but the local area network connecting further IP router with further areas behind so one step you can do and yeah 15 areas are possible as before so we don't change the, the main structure or the, the the amount of area couplers in this constellation but if you want you can replace also the line couplers by IP routers so then you have a structure which consists only of the line itself is twisted pair and the power supply and the uh, components inside then I go directly via the IP router to the Ethernet to the local area network connecting all the other IP router representing in principle lines so in total we have again here 225 lines possible with the let me see even more flat structure if you have a look you have only the lines itself via IP router you go to the backbone our local area network and not more so it's a bit simpler and as already mentioned 225 of these IP router with lines behind can be installed in one KNX installation so that's a most powerful constellation if you would like to have a fast backbone only and and only the lines behind should be in twisted pair technology so that's not new this also was also existing before but just as a reminder yeah, let's come now to the components itself. I start again here with this IP interface. You see already at the housing it's a bit different. I come to this uh, in some more details in the next slides. Let's first of all have a look to the main features of this new component. First of all, this was a big request from the market. We have now five tunneling server available. What is behind I will explain. Uh, before this it was not available. So five tunneling server as a first milestone let's say yeah the power supply and you might remember from the former device uh, the KNX bus connection with the KNX bus supply is not enough to to energize such an IP interface we need an external power supply uh, the existing IP interface or former one needed uh, DC voltage between 10 and 30 volt DC now the new one uh, between 12 and 30 volt DC so in practically 12 volt or 24 volt could be used one option but as there's a second option if you have a power over Ethernet network according to this class mentioned here that's important there are different classes uh, on the market then you don't need any external power supply anymore but you can use the energy from the 
uh, Ethernet, from the power over Ethernet structure. Yeah. So that's possible. So one of these supplies you need. Um, in our product range overview we have uh, such a yeah power over Ethernet patch panel with a power supply. Um, originally I think uh, prepared or uh, planned for our um, to entry systems. Um, this is not in accordance with this class, so it cannot be used for our IP interface and also later for our IP router. Yeah, but of course this class with power over Ethernet is available on the market. Please take care of this. Yeah, if you look to the hardware, to the housing itself, you see maybe immediately some differences. We have an adapted hardware here. First of all, the network cable connection is different. You have now a bit more space in the distribution board, we will see later on in the picture. The labeling field is improved, it's bigger and easy to remove and to, to snap on again. Also here you will see something later. In addition, the DIN rail connection is much easier now. You don't need any screwdriver anymore to um, release such a component from the DIN rail. We have a, ca a cover cap here. This is here. Behind this we have the KNX bus connection and also the uh, 12 to 30 volt DC. There's an additional feature in our component here. It has to do with some rules. Um, if you connect here your uh, KNX bus cable or also your um, low voltage uh, power supply, you have to remove part of the isolation. And then next to this there might be a 230 volt wire and to have a clear and, and um, correct yeah, separation between these two voltage levels you need an additional cover here, or additional isolation um, um, implemented here with our additional cover cap. Yeah, and not at the moment not really visible for you, but also the programming button for the physical address uh, has been uh, yeah uh, improved. And now it's uh, a kind of, of button with a hole behind, so it's more precise now to, to position your, your screwdriver to press a button, but it's also possible with your finger um, to do this fingernail. You will see it in a small movie we have prepared for you. So some small but significant improvements in the hardware concept here. Um, yeah, some more features here. Um, the local area network you connect can be either, either 10 megabit or 100 megabit uh, solution. So automatically adapted, but maximum is in the communication speed 100 megabit here. And last but not least, um, our iBus tool, our service tool. Of course also these components, the IP interface, IP router, will be supported by the new iBus tool, uh, the new version we have right now. We will show you later on part of it already today. More details will be then in our next webinar. Jürgen gave me just a hint. Um, the new housing concept, just shown here a bit or explained a bit, will be also valid for our next new components. Yeah, so it's not only for these devices here, for these devices, but also valid then for further new components. Um, this uh, installation concept you will see in the next movie, in the next slides. Um, uh, the bus, sorry, the, the um, programming button and these things I've just mentioned. Yeah, here a small overview again of the hardware. I think most of it is already explained. We have again three LEDs here uh, on the component, showing you is a component active, is it running? Then for the local area network an LED, showing you is there any traffic and a connection at all. So a blinking LED shows you IP traffic and the telegram LED shows you also connection to twisted pair plus if it's blinking uh, communication optically. Yeah, to show you a bit more the hardware, we have prepared a small movie to show you uh, the real component, how to mount it, how to, to press a programming button. I just go over to a small movie. So how to snap on the component, it's like before. You can do it here and if you would like to release, you press only the component down and you can release it. You need no screwdriver anymore. It's really a big improvement. You snap it on again. Then we connect the bus connection, bus cable. And now you can pull or put on this cover cap. So now it's completely protected. 
if you take your screwdriver to press a programming button, you can see here it's a bit different. The programming button is really easy to find the right position of your screwdriver. And if you want, it's still possible with your finger to switch on the programming mode. Yeah, the labeling carrier you will see right now. You can remove easily also by your finger. You can keep it open or remove it completely to insert uh, a piece of paper with the address. Snap it on again. Yeah, you see it here again. Uh, compared with the old device, we have here two pictures. On the left, you see our IPRS or IPSS 2.1. You see already the difference in connecting the network cable. It's directly on top here. Our new components have a small hole here, so it's a bit deeper, resulting in more space for your cable here in your distribution board. Um, you see here over there is the next rail in your distribution board maybe with further components and uh, it's better for your cabling here, for your network cabling. Okay. And if you look to the rear side, on the right you see our momentary uh, IP devices where you have to use a screwdriver to release this device from the DIN rail if necessary. Here it's much easier. You see the spring here. You do nothing else but pressing down the component from the top and then you can remove it here on the lower side easily from the DIN rail. So that's a new concept here for also for future components. Yeah, let's go now a bit more to the software. First of all, we have here um, two different software, not two different, it's not the right word, but for ETS3, one version. So still ETS3 is supported with the new components, but of course, mainly you should use ETS4, ETS5. Um, difference is in the number of tunneling servers. Remember, I've mentioned five tunneling servers. I will explain one of the next slide what's behind. Um, ETS3, together with this application, allows only one tunneling server. It has to do with the limitation in the ETS3 that you cannot adjust more tunneling servers, tunneling connections. Yeah, together with the IBUS tool, we'll show a bit later, we can discover on the IP side the devices, in both versions possible. And uh, if necessary, and it's a further feature, we can also update the firmware of our new IP devices together with the IBUS tool. But it's independent of the version you use, uh, of the ETS version, you can do it here as well, in both versions. Yeah, and uh, these tunneling server, five tunneling servers, already mentioned two times. Uh, allow me to, to explain this here a bit more detailed, what's behind. So, we have here a KNX installation, Twisted Pair. Together with an IP interface, we would like to have connection to our local area network. No problem, we can do it, as you can see. On the network, you have different applications running. Maybe a PC with ETS to download to program KNX devices below. Additional visualization is running for visualization of this KNX project. Maybe the IBUS tool is running in parallel or should run in parallel. Uh, you connect everything to Ethernet and now you can establish up to five connections between these different applications on the Ethernet side together with one IP interface to your KNX installation behind. So you can download via IP interface, via ETS, and parallel you can have a look on the IBUS tool, what's going on there, and, and take some actions there. And this is behind these five tunneling servers, five parallel tunnels are possible, together with physical addresses you have to adjust in the ETS only, together with the IP interface. Yeah. So this is behind these five parallel tunneling, tunneling connections, in former times not available, if you would like to have such a constellation with the existing old devices, then you needed five IP interfaces because they were not able to handle more than one connection at the same time. So that's really different. It was of course a request also from the market and now uh, available in this component here. Yeah, if we look now to the application in the ETS, um, it's relatively simple, the ETS application has no parameters and neither any group address objects, group objects. So you cannot adjust anything here. The only thing you can do, you have to click on the component with the right mouse button and then you go to the property uh, function here. If you cl click on this, then on the right side of the ETS, a new window appears. It's uh, existing also in other devices. The difference is here that we have two 
yeah, parameter blocks here, or yeah, two, two functions here, setting and IP, which appear here together with the IP interface and later on also together with the IP router. So first of all, you see here a name for the component you can adjust. You can type in any name for the device. You see here the yeah, physical address of the hardware of the IP interface itself. And here, additional address five times. I think you can uh, imagine what's behind. These are the five tunneling server addresses. You have to adjust. First of all, if you don't do anything, it looks for the first three uh, five addresses automatically assigned here. But if you want, you can click on one of these uh, tunneling server address and adjust here another address, which of course is available in your your structure. You cannot use uh, IP, uh, sorry, um, physical addresses which were already used by other real KNX devices in the line. So very simple. Five will be proposed, and you can change it if you want. And this will be later on these uh, sorry <laughs> physical addresses you can use to get connection from any any other Ethernet application down to your KNX twisted pair installation. Yeah, and so function IP allows you to adjust the IP address of the IP interface. Remember, it's a KNX device, of course, with a physical address, but also an IP component, which needs an IP address. You can, as before, select uh, do you would like to obtain an IP address automatically. Um, if you have a DHCP server, for example, in your IP network behind, or would, uh, if you would like to use a fixed IP address, you click here and adjust your fixed IP address with a subnet mask and the default gateway. Um, this topic we will not, let me say, uh, discuss in details today. It will be a topic a bit more detailed in the next webinar, as already mentioned. So, But as before, you have your two options to adjust uh, the IP address. Yeah, and if you would like to, to use uh, the IP interface for programming, you have to go. Here have a, I have a screenshot with the ETS5. Click on the bus uh, button here, and then you see after hint, uh, behind connections and interfaces your existing uh, interfaces you have already in your installation. Here in this case, it's the IP interface, which will be visible immediately with this individual physical address 2021. And IP tunneling is a mode which can be handled with this device. You see here the name of the device you have adjusted in the ETS already with the physical address and 2021, the first, let me say, uh, tunneling server address you can use here for downloading uh, applications, for example, into the KNX devices. So this is very simple. More or less it works like a USB interface, then, but just for your understanding, so it will look like. And you see also the uh, already assigned IP address for this device. Yeah, so that's the IP interface, not that much. Remember, tunneling mode, up to five parallel tunnels are possible. The rest is more or less plug and play and relatively simple. Yeah, if we come now to the IP router, looks the same from outside at least, the hardware, uh, the housing, though there is uh, uh, not the same component. What do we have here? First of all, um, we have the same possibilities like the IP interface. So five tunneling servers can be. Uh, used here as well as in the IP interface, not different. Topic power supply the same as before with the IP interface as well as the adapted hardware. So everything the same, not different from what I have told before with the IP interface. But there is something more available of course, we talk about an IP router. Um, first of all you remember it's for replacing align and area couplers. The way of communication is different. First of all, if we talk about uh, IP router and routing mode, uh, we talk about KNX Net IP protocol, which uses a multicast communication. Multicast means that yeah, many other recipients on the network can receive my telegrams I have sent out on the network. Uh, this will work via a multicast, a common multicast address. I will explain a bit later. So this multicast mode is a standard mode if you use Nets, uh, KNX Net IP protocol in the routing mode together with our IP router. It's a standard protocol, but in some installations it's not possible, then unicast is necessary. A special communication, a bit later explained by Jürgen a bit. But we will go in some more details then also in our uh, next webinar in November. 
So a special option we have here. Then as another feature, in case of KNX bus voltage failure, that might happen, we can send out from this device on the network to, a, for example, a visualization, a message bus voltage failure, which can be, of course, evaluated and displayed on the visualization. So it's a network command uh, we have here as an additional feature. And what is also very important, you might remember starting from the ETS4, we have an extended group address range. Up to 65,000 group addresses can be adjusted now. Before this, it was half of it only. Um, up to now in our existing and all other IP routers on the market, it was not possible to filter also this extended group address range. Means these group addresses could, uh, could be used in the past, but no filtering was possible, starting from 32,000 something. Yeah? Um, so this was of course uh, a challenge sometimes in big projects where you have a lot of traffic. With a new IP router, you have also now this complete filtering of all possible group addresses available as we have already in our existing line couplers, but now also in the IP router. Very important uh, feature now we have this new, the new IP router. Yeah, and then IBUS tool support also of course here for the IP router, a bit shown by Jürgen later on. Uh, we have uh, improved hardware, enhanced hardware uh, for more performance of the component. Uh, the situation regarding uh, network speed, 10 or 100 megabit is the same like the IP interface. Yeah, hardware already explained. I don't have to go into details, as well as this way of connecting and, and uh, wiring also already explained, not different from the IP interface. Yeah, then I have a further look to the software of the new IP router. Again, available application, ETS application for ETS3 and of course for ETS4 and ETS5. Also here we have to uh, say that only one tunneling server is available as ETS3 due to the limitation in the ETS software, ETS3, but the rest, the unicast communication, the bus voltage failure communication to the network, filtering of all group addresses you see here, it's either only available with ETS4 and 5 because ETS3 is not prepared for this extended range of, of group addresses, so it cannot be available here. So another argument for the ETS4 or ETS5 uh, version. Yeah, and IP discovery to detect connected IP devices via IBUS tool or firmware update. A further feature we have now um, can be done in our both bespoke versions. And uh, the unicast parameterization will be done in the IBUS tool. Today only a small hint more than in the next webinar. Yeah, tunneling, as mentioned, is also possible here with the IP router in parallel to the standard routing mode. I come to this a bit later. So it's, that's, that's like the IP interface. Yeah. So five tunneling connections are possible at the same time plus routing later on. Yeah, and if you look to the routing mode, KNX Net IP routing, I try to explain it a bit more detailed here. We have here a constellation of four lines Every line is connected via an IP router to the network. And of course, the IP network connects all these five uh, four lines. So let's have an example of a telegram coming from one line, sent over IP to another line. What? How does it work, this routing mode? Together with the multicast address, 2240 If I send a command from a sensor from this line, for example, with a group address 2336 with the value of, value 0, it will be sent to my IP router, of course, will be evaluated in the filter table. Is it necessary to, to pass through this telegram? The filter table gives the information. If yes, it will go out, will be transferred to NK NIX net IP telegram and will be sent out together with a multicast address I've just mentioned on the network. Components which are not related to KNX, like a PC or any network attached storage or maybe a printer, will not take this telegram because they are not working with this multicast address. 
it's not interesting for them. But of course, the other IP routers will listen to this telegram because they have the same multicast address. We'll take the telegram. Evaluate in the filter table, is it necessary to pass through this telegram? In this case, yes, because the group address is used here. And then translate it to a KNX twisted pair telegram. And of course, the actuator receives uh, it and, and will switch off uh, the relay. Uh, so via this multicast address, we connect KNX devices, KNX IP devices on the network. And this is a reserved IP, sorry, multicast address for KNX communication. Good. A further look to the software or ATS application of the IP router. There are some parameters, no group objects, but parameters. And uh, three blocks, communication from KNX twisted pair to LAN can be adjusted here. So from the twisted pair on the network. As before, you might remember this, uh, we can adjust what shall happen with our group telegrams, filtering typical situation at least finally in the project. Routing means any telegram, group telegram can pass uh, the, area, uh, sorry, the IP router and blocking of course stops <coughs> completely the communication from twisted pair to LAN. Different is now it's not only for main group 0 to 13 available but now also for this extended uh, group address range uh, main group 14 up to 31. So for all group uh, telegrams available. Some further features here or some further parameters. Physically addressed telegrams can be blocked or filtered. What does it mean block or what, what is a physically addressed telegram at all? It's a telegram to download the physical address into a device. So if you want, you can completely yeah, stop any downloading or any programming of physical addresses. And also broadcast telegrams. Broadcast telegrams, for example, is a telegram to detect a device in programming mode. So a broadcast command will be sent out and um, you also can root or block this. So you can, uh, yeah, let me say control the traffic or the communication, especially in case of, 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 of monitoring, of, of programming with these parameters. Yeah. Telegram confirmation, um, necessary normally, of course, by the IP router. You can do it only if routed, standard version, but in some special cases, for example, you have a visualization behind, um, you maybe can also adjust here always, so that any telegram will be confirmed and uh, does not have to be repeated, if necessary. Good. Same principle or similar principle if you uh, check or you would like to adjust the traffic from the network, LAN, down to KNX twisted pair. The same for um, yeah, adjusting the group address communication here, filtering, routing and blocking. Also for physically and broadcast of physically addressed telegrams and broadcast telegram, you can route or block in the other direction. Um, we have here a further feature in case of errors in communication from LAN down to KNX. Error means, for example, not acknowledged or a line is busy below. Um, we can adjust, shall these telegrams be repeated? Yes or no? And also user define some options. I think we will do it in the next webinar, some more special parameters here and some more explanation around this. Yeah, and IP settings um, possible here. First of all, distinction between multicast and unicast. Uh, multicast is standard communication, unicast only in special cases. Will be explained a bit later then uh, in the next webinar. And uh, so for only some special situations. And on the right side, Remember the properties, if I click on the component, right mouse button properties, same principle as uh, in the IP interface, adjustment of the IP address, either um, obtained automatically or you use fixed IP addresses. You type in the IP address by yourself. Both is possible. Yeah, and also here, remember, we have additionally five tunneling server available. We have to adjust then, in this case, five additional physical addresses um, to use these tunneling communication additionally, the same as in the IP interface, the adjustment. Yeah, also here, 
the name of the component can be typed in here will be downloaded then if you download uh, the application also here similar to the IP interface yeah and now I will stop from my side uh, I would like to give now to Jürgen Jürgen will explain a bit more starting with the IP router and some more application solutions hello Jürgen Schilder speaking I would like to say welcome to the second part of this webinar new IP devices I give you an introduction about the new features of the IBUS tool how to use the IP router to make a download via tunneling or via routing connection and uh, how we can use for example this unicast application and some more small nice features let me switch off the webcam so okay um, let me start with the new features of the IBUS tool our the IBUS tool is our free of charge diagnostic and commissioning tool you can download this software from our website uh, abb.com slash knix it is free of charge you can install it on each PC or laptop with Microsoft Windows and it helps you during commissioning for example to test some devices like our shutter actuator all the parameter settings and so on so this um, IBUS tool for example has another features not only for testing or for diagnostic of devices which you can do here in the menu connect to device we have here another demo part and here we have our menu to click on this button for the new IP devices and here in this menu IP devices we can discover and we can make an update for example here he is listening to our IP network so let's go to the menu IP the first button we can click here is the so-called discovery function. In the discovery function, the IBUS tool scans the IP network and shows you here all KNX ABB IP devices. Like here in my example, I have three IP routers, the uh, version 3.1, the new one, and I get here in a list all this uh, overview of all these three devices. At first, the device type, like here, ABB IP router. The next row uh, column, we can see here the device name. This is uh, the text we can write in the ETS, which is also downloaded into our IP router. Maybe here, the name where the device is installed, the DB, the floor, for example, and the KNX uh, individual address, for example, here, area 1, line 3, the IP router, the MAC address, uh, excuse me, the IP address in our network segment, the MAC address and here on the last position we can see if the firmware in this IP uh, routers are now up to date or it's necessary to make an update. When you click here on this button detail data we can see more information for example which firmware is inside the device like here at the moment we have the firmware of the IP controller 1.0.470 and some settings we made in the ETS, for example, about the address, the network address, if you use a fixed IP address or uh, the setting a dynamic IP address. The settings of the fixed IP address, you can see here the address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the speed, for example, the programming mode now is off, and here uh, if the KNX bus voltage, for example, is okay. And on the last, we can see our routing multicast address. Remember, Thorsten words, this multicast address here is used for the routing function of the IP router. So um, you can refresh this view when you click here on this button, and then the IBIS tool scans again our IP network. So the next feature is we can make here an update. So now when a new update is available, then you can see here a yellow sign here in this column firmware status and then we know oh we have to make an update of this IP router or also IIP interface so this EPOS tool shows you the IP router and of course also the new IP interface to download this new version or firmware version from our web server it is necessary to have internet connection so you uh, it is downloaded automatically and stored on the hard disk in a special folder of the IBUS tool and later when you make the update into the device it is not necessary to have an online connection to our to our server but how to do this update will be a part of our next webinar at the end of November another nice feature is here for blinking the LED the network LED of the IP devices so we can tick here on a device click on the button here blink LED and then the network LED of this device selected devices is now blinking for about 10 seconds and you here you can see the activity 
here maybe this bar is running and shows that at the moment this LED of the network device with this IP address now is blinking. And with the next button, the restart, uh, the restart device button, we can make a kind of software uh, of, of soft start. It is the same like you go to the IP router, you disconnect the power supply, you disconnect KNX, everything. So by clicking here on this button, then the device makes us, uh, a restart. Again, you can see here the status of the restart, which will last up to one minute, for example. So more features of the iBus tool we will, we will explain you in the next webinar. Some words about this unicast communication. The, uh, according to the KNX standard, is it necessary that all IP router independent the manufacturer communicates via the same multicast address. But in some special maybe installation, it is necessary to use a kind of unicast communication between IP router. But this, uh, this unicast communication does not comply with the KNX standards uh, and is only possible with our ABB IP router. So this kind of unicast communication is limited up to 10 devices yeah, and can be used, for example, if a router or other network devices, switches, hubs, for example, blocks multicast addresses. And then these devices can communicate via unicast. Unicast means there's a point-to-point -point connection. Like here in this example, we have three KNX lines, line, line number 150, here 270, and here 130. Instead of using multicast, we use unicast. Unicast means that this IP router communicates to the device, to the next IP router, and to the next IP router. That's why the device must know the network address. So it's very important here to have fixed IP addresses. So via the iBus tool, we can create here our unicast groups and download the groups here into the IP router. So for example, this IP router with the network address makes a point-to-point -point connection to this IP router and sends here telegrams, commands for switching, for dimming and so on, and to the next IP router and of course also to the visualization and shows here maybe the status messages, temperatures or so on. And the same in the other IP router, they have also a point-to-point -point connection to this IP router, to the next IP router and to the visualization. How to create these unicast groups and so on will be also a part of our next webinar. <clears throat> so with the IP router we can make also a kind of routing connection, for example for downloading. Now when we here in our IP network we have the PC with the ETS, we have a visualization for example panel or a comfort touch panel or a PC with our iBus tool, then it's possible that we make a communication which is the so-called routing connection. Routing means we are here on our IP network with our devices and we listen to our multicast communication, to our multicast uh, telegrams here on the IP network. <clears throat> so when we press here, for example, one rocker of a sensor, he sends a KNX telegram, it is converted here into a KNX net IP multicast telegram when the group address is here in the filter table and sent here on the IP network and the other devices here listening with what happens here on the IP network and doing the command for example. It is very important that when we use here the routing communications that all devices must have local addresses out here of our line because we have no tunneling connection, we are in the multicast mode so the devices listen what happens here on our so-called, you can say yeah, this is our KNX backbone or uh, our top level for example. <clears throat> this is one possibility. And when we uh, start a route, a download from this PC here with our local address 00251, then we want to download a device which is in the line 110, which has the address 1124, like for example here our switch actuator. Then we start here the download. The PC sends these telegrams here in our, in our, uh, in our IP world and uses this multicast. Multicast means the download goes here left and this way, goes this way, goes to this IP router, he knows, okay, this is not for me, he blocks here the download, the download goes to the visualization, which blocks, this IP router blocks the download, yeah, and the download receives also this IP router, and this IP router knows, okay, I have to forward the download here into this line. So via multicast, it is very easy to make a download, but we have the traffic here in our complete IP network. <clears throat> to do the setting of the routing connection, we go to the ETS, click here on the button 
bus and then we see here our so-called ethernet or our network adapter which looks like here maybe this is my network controller ethernet connection and I have to set here the individual address, my local address of this um, adapter, which must be out of the line, like here, for example, 00255. By pressing this button test, we can check, yes, this multicast communication here is okay. So now when you enable your Wi-Fi connection, then you will get a second adapter, network adapter for your Wi-Fi communication. So you can make also a download via multicast uh, via your second network adapter. Then it's independent how many IP routers you have in your project. You have only one routing connection with your network cable or one with your Wi-Fi controller. <coughs> so when we have additional maybe a visualization or a panel, a comfort touch panel, for example, in our cane, in our uh, in our building, then we can use here the same, the multicast communication. Then the panel or the visualization must have also address out of the line, which is for example zero. 252 and then he's also listening to the telegrams which comes here maybe from this line uh, or send commands here into this line it's also possible but then we have to do, uh, do the settings in the software of our visualization system for example we click here on the button knx ip routing and have to write here our multicast address which is the 224 023 12 and write here the local address which must be out of the topology of our lines, for example, a device in the main line 00255, for example. These settings are now made in our software for the visualization, visualization system. <clears throat> now let's come to the tunneling connection. The tunneling connection, which is nearly the same, or which is the same like before in our IP interface. The IP router can do, uh, can do two things parallel, so he's routing the telegrams for the communication between the other IP routers and we can use also the IP router at the same time to make a download, for example here via the ETS or to connect the visualization via tunneling connection or the iBus tool or for example our smartphone or our tablet. Then we create so-called tunneling connections, so tunneling means uh, that we connect it via tunneling like we are installed our PC here inside a line. That's why the local address of a tunneling connection must be the same like here in our line. For example here we have area 1, line number 3 and then the local address of this tunneling connection must be 13251 for example or the visualization 255, uh, the tablet uh, 255 or so on. And so one IP router can have maximum five tunneling connections at the same time. And the setting of the tunneling connection is, this nearly, is the same like in our IP interface. We go to the ETS, here to the menu bus connections and then we see here our selected IP, IP router or more from the other lines. We can click here. You see the icon here is different. This means this is a tunneling connection and here the green one this shows this is our routing connection from our network. It looks like a network adapter. And then very important, the device has a local address, the IP router because it works as, a, as a, a coupler device, 130, and additional, we need one of the five tunneling connections, for example, the 251. Yeah, it must be in the same topology like here, our the address of the device itself. And then click on the button, test, and then now we can make a download via tunneling yeah, straight into our device, like we have it, for example, yeah, before. So, or when we have, for example, a visualization system, then we do the same. We create a tunneling connection from our visualization system to all of our IP routers. So maybe when we have 83 IP routers in our KNX installation, then we have 83 tunneling connections from our visualization system uh, to the IP routers. <coughs> so, and the address uh, we can we can set for example here in our visualization system we set here the address of our tunneling connections maybe here the IP address of the first tunnel and then the next next and so on so some words about uh, remote access to a KNX installation like for example we want to do it via our smartphone or our tablet what is possible the different solutions one solution, the easiest one is, we use here an app on our uh, smartphone or on our tablet, which comes, for example, from a control. This device needs no additional hardware. It is like maybe like a sensor, 
yeah, or shows you some status messages. So we can send a command here via Wi-Fi to a Wi-Fi access point. The Wi-Fi access point converts this telegram into an IP telegram into a KNX, uh, KNX net IP protocol uh, telegram sent here in our uh, to our IP router or IP interface and here he sent the telegram into the KNX world and switch or dim or calls the scenario for example. It's one solution. Uh, here we need no additional hardware, only our IP router or IP interface and the Wi-Fi access point. So another solution, for example, is that we use the same our smartphone, our smart or tablet, and additional in our IP world we have a piece of hardware which can be, for example, here we call it App Server or KNX Server, a device which listening via IP to our other IP routers or IP interfaces. So he knows all the values or maybe status messages which are now up to date here in our KNX world. And via the smartphone or tablet, yeah, we build up a connection here to this app server and the app server gets the information here from our KNX world. This means here we need additional piece of hardware, but we have also uh, advantages than without this hardware. Also with routing or tunneling connection. So all we have in our project the visualization system and um, nearly all of these visualization systems have also a special kind of app for smartphones and tablets so we can also build up here a Wi-Fi connection like a tunneling or routing here to our visualization PC and the visualization PC knows exactly what happens here in our KNX world. That's also possible. Now you can also operate here your visualization system or you can see the same and do the same here on your smartphone or tablet. Good. And of course, our Push Comfort Touch is also available to connect here to the IP network or via KNX interface directly here. Then we don't need here IP interface or IP routing. And then via, uh, the, via the Push Comfort app, we can also uh, operate and see what happens here in our KNX world. So via Wi-Fi, the same, we have a connection tunneling or routing here to our Comfort Touch system. And the Comfort Touch, touch system still listens what happens here in our KNX world also a very popular solution. Some words how to control audio or for example why not also video devices. You know our KNX bus speed is limited to 9600 bits per second so we cannot send audio or video data via KNX but we can send commands like for example volume, change the volume or call a playlist or such things. So on the KNX market, there are some manufacturers, they have uh, called kind of audio actuators, devices which are listening here or connected to the IP network and it's possible to connect maybe here different speakers, multi-zone speakers also possible. So and then via KNX, we can send here command to the IP router, he sent the telegram into the IP network and then maybe we can control here the volume, we can call a playlist, yeah, or we can change the, the uh, web radio station or for example and of course we get feedback into our KNX world uh, the status of the volume, the name of the artist, the name of the playlist and a lot of more information. That's one possibility also to use the IP router to send commands and control audio or video devices. <coughs> so, oops, too fast. Oops, oops. So, yes, okay. <coughs> So um, maybe in, in, in larger buildings we have not only KNX as our bus systems, there are quite common to have also maybe a LON system or bugnet system and we want to send information into the bugnet world or from the bugnet world in the KNX world, how we can do it. Um, we don't need a, a special gateway, we can use it for example via the so-called OPC technology. So, our KNX IP router cannot communicate here via our BugNet gateway. These are different protocols, different multicast addresses, so we have not here the, a way to have a direct communication. So it's quite common to do it via the OPC technology. So we have here, for example, PC with different kind of OPC servers. So we need at first one is a piece of hardware, a so-called KNX OPC server. So he's listening to our KNX telegrams, multicast or tunneling uh, communication. Additionally, we have a LON, um, a, a LON OPC server and another piece of software, a, a BugNet OPC server. So the BugNet OPC server is listening to the BugNet 
multicast telegrams. And via another piece of software, the OPC bridge, it can, uh, the, uh, the data can be exchanged between the KNX OPC server and the BugNet OPC server. So then it's possible to send here telegram uh, from our BugNet system via the gateway, via the BugNet OPC server, via the bridge in uh, over the KNX OPC server into the KNX world. This is possible by using this OPC technology. And maybe on the top we have a visualization system or maybe also a kind of smartphone solution or tablet solution which uh, shows here the status of all our systems, KNX, OP, uh, LON and BugNet. So, uh, nearly similar is uh, when we use, for example, building management server. Uh, with building management server, we have also here our different kind of gateways and we can exchange the different protocols from our KNX or BugNet system or LON. And we have here also on the top our visualization to see maybe different status or to send messages from our one system in to another one. Good. Um, also some small uh, more information when you make uh, when you want to make a download via the IP router IP interface it is nice we can use our still our existing IP devices our PC we don't need a USB cable um, but be careful it can happen that a firewall or virus virus scanner can block a download uh, it depends for example on your system if you have for example here the McAfee then a window pops up and you can create for example a rule that it's possible to make such a download yeah. or for example on my ABB network I have my ABB laptop I have to click here on the McAfee icon and I have to switch off here manually the firewall and then it's possible to make a download via IP routing or IP tunneling so but it's necessary to have here a, a kind of level of admin rights so please check if you have the admin rights and when you have no communication you are, you are not successful by a download, check the firewall, check your virus scanner or switch off. If you have not the possibility to switch off the firewall or you cannot make a download, then it's good to have a USB interface with you and then you can make a download via the USB interface. So never forget to have here a USB interface with you in case you have no access here to the IP network or some network devices or switches or hubs, for example, blocks here a download. <clears throat> so also this can also happen that maybe some ports are blocked when you use the IBUS tool because the IBUS tool works, uh, uses the ports 1900 or 19000 and when these ports are also blocked by the, your virus scanner or your firewall then you can also see here no IP devices in the discovery function. And when you want to know the IP address of your IP router then maybe you have to use a kind of network scanner. This is available freeware which you can download maybe from the World Wide Web. Good, so I think we come to the end of the webinar, exactly four o'clock here in Heidelberg. Uh, let me summarize some uh, the important topics of our devices. Uh, at first, with the new IP interface, IPSS311. Remember, we have now five tunneling servers, which can be used parallel at the same time. <coughs> the device now can be supplied via power ethernet. You can have both power over Ethernet and valve fault. So if one system maybe has a failure, this device is still working. We are the IBUS tool. We can make update. We can, we can uh, scan the devices. We can see all the devices, the name of our IP router, IP interface. And of course, we have overworked the housing of the concept. You know, we, we don't need a screwdriver to remove the device from our DIN rail. And we have here more space for our network cable on the top. Uh, so it's easier and for better wiring. The same we have, of course, for the IP router, because it's the same housing, uh, the same, uh, also we have here overworked the labeling field, the same topics. And the IP router, remember, we can do, uh, it is used for the multicast communication, additional, we can build groups with up to 10 devices for unicast communication, <coughs> and uses the complete range for filtering group addresses from main group 0 up to 30 through 31, which was before not possible. Good. Both devices should be available soon, maybe tomorrow or on Friday. Uh, they will be uh, the market launch will be started, so maybe it will be available at the beginning of next week. So these two new devices, uh, the IP interface and the IP router, you can see here also the order number. 
the former IP interface, the IPSS 2.1, is now uh, discontinued. So this device will not longer be available. However, the IP router, the 2.1, this device will still be available. So you have the chance to order the former one or the new, the new one. So both will be available at the same time. So I think it makes sense to order here the new one with more tunneling functions and so on. But it, the former one will still be available. So some marketing material uh, is also finished and um, also available. We have the product manuals of the IP router, the IP interface, so the handbook with description of all the features, the settings and so on as PDF or also uh, <coughs> as a printed version. We have technical data sheets and you can find all this information of course on our website abb.com slash Kenix. <coughs> This website is updated at the moment and maybe tomorrow or I think latest on, on Friday all this information will be available in the product categories in the uh, chapter number two system system components. And then you will, will find also the ETS application for ETS 3, ETS 4, 5, technical data, the product information and of course all necessary papers like the CE declaration or the environmental information. So maybe please wait until tomorrow or on Friday and then you will find here all this marketing material uh, for the new IP devices. Good, some final words um, about our next webinar. Our next webinar will take place on the 25th of November, also Wednesday, the same time at 9 o'clock German time in the morning and in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. The topic is now again IP router, IP interface, but with more information, with adv we call it uh, advanced features like uh, the IBUS tool, how, we, for example, we can create all these uh, uni, uh, unicast groups, how we can do this, how we can make, for example, an update, firmware update in an IP device. And uh, the filter table. Now, when we have a panel or visualization system in our IP world, how we have to add manually group addresses, such things are necessary. Or to record telegrams on the IP network with special software like, for example, Wireshark. Yeah, in our KNX world, we have the group monitor, the bus monitor, but how we can see the KNX net IP telegrams on the IP network. Yeah, this is also a part. And of course, remote access, yeah, how we can have access from outside the building via the tablet, for example, or software to make a download worldwide into a KNX installation. So really more technical oriented topics in the next webinar. So far, I think that will bring us to the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you for taking part and your attention. And we're looking forward to welcome you again the next webinar, 25th of November. Have a nice day. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.